Good afternoon. You're watching AB Live, a news-based chat show in which we discuss topics ranging from news, business, politics, and so much more. And obviously, right now, the only topic in everyone's mind is COVID-19. And today, we are going to be doing a session on HR and business in the time of COVID-19. Please remember that we will be taking questions from you in today's session. So if you have any queries related to HR policies, economic impact on businesses, post them in the comments below, and I will be taking those questions with thought leader, Claire Donnelly. Thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you for having me. Right, Claire, so let's just get on with the HR uh, directives for now. What is it that employers and companies can do and what is it that they can't do right now in this situation? Okay, I think in this situation, I think the first thing they need to do is take into account their employees and how they are feeling. So I think definitely talk to them as much as possible. Um, remembering the fact that most of us are expats here. Most of us have probably got family back home and potentially elderly that fall into the at-risk uh, area. So to take into account how they're feeling, what they can do to help them in these situations is definitely yeah. something they should be doing. Right, great. So at this point, uh, what I really want to know is HR policies are known to be very rigid, very strict, everything needs to be in writing, etc. Yeah. Do you see more flexibility coming into place? I think this the situation we have now is unprecedented and, and I think therefore we have to think outside the box. Right. Um, we are restricted locally with local labour law but that doesn't mean to say we shouldn't take the world best practice and so I think we should be HR should set up and start thinking outside the box, come up with some different ideas and certainly consider flexibility and the flexible ways of working that other regions potentially already have that we don't have here. Right, so uh, I know a lot of companies in this region have asked employees to go on unpaid leave uh, indefinitely, sometimes it's a month. Um, so is that really allowed legally? Well, this, the simple answer is no, um, because we have WPS control and therefore WPS is a way of managing salary versus what it says in That's the wage protection system, is it? Absolutely. That this is what we're supposed to be paid, this is what we are being paid. However, in this situation, I don't see that some companies have an option. That, I believe, should potentially be the last option. There are other ways of working the that will allow business to carry on as usual. By sending people on unpaid leave, business isn't being done. Right. We don't know how long this situation is going to last. Hopefully not for much longer. And immediately we come out of the situation. If we put send people on unpaid leave, they may have potentially left the country. How do we get them back again? Right, so what is it that they can do then if that's the last resort, sending people away on unpaid leave? I, I, think, I think we forget that our employees are sensible people mm -hmm. and, and they've got innovative ideas. So the first place I'd look is ask the employees what do they think they could do? Yeah. What can we do as a business? Right. Put your arms around the employees and get some suggestions for them. Look at part-time working. Um, look at, at home working. I think work companies have to be open and honest with the, the employees is recognizing how much cash flow can they survive to have an employee uh, mm -hmm. working for them. Employees just need to know they still have a job and I think they will come up with some amazing ideas if we just ask them. Right, so at this point, do you think work from home needs to be made mandatory and not just be given as an option to companies? Um, I think it should stay an option at the moment until we're told otherwise. Why? Because a lot of businesses can't do what they do from home. Mm -hmm. A lot of businesses haven't got the infrastructure. I was with a client this week and they don't have laptops. Right. They all work from desktops. Mm -hmm. So how does that work? Um, they should be thinking currently about if we are told to start sending everyone from home and working from home, how they can logistically can do that. So they should think about a contingency plan for that. But I believe until told otherwise, I think it, it's better to have a collaborative way of working and have people working together and sharing ideas and stories. Right, just moving on to crisis questions now. So what if a company finds out that a team member or an employee has been contracted with the disease, what is the next step? Well, the first thing they do is obviously you need to send that employee home sure. and then get the rest of the, the team um, tested as quickly as possible to make sure that they're all clear of these things. Right. And I think, again, some of the contingencies employees should ha employees should have is limiting the amount of contact employees have, say, in the, the staff canteen, the staff kitchen, mm -hmm. phasing that out. Um, and just, just being sensible. But if an employee falls sick with COVID-19, they obviously should be sent home, isolate, self-isolate, and the rest of the team should be tested just to calm nerves down. But are you saying that the company should still be functioning at that point? I think 
that's really down to taking advice from the Ministry of Health. Um, I'm sure they'd be able to advise. And, and I, I haven't got experience of anyone suffering from this mm -hmm. and, and what the Ministry of Health has advised. All right. But I think, again, just having a sensible approach and taking advice from the experts on what you should and shouldn't do. Sure. So I'm just going to take a few questions now. Uh, so we've got Yola, Yola Chudi, who asks you this. Do you foresee any government directives from private businesses to work from home? Or is it all at the discretion of private business owners? At the moment, it's all at the discretion. Do I see it coming? I think, I hope not. I'm hoping, as we all should be, that come the 31st of March, the restrictions in country lift and mm -hmm. we've potentially got through this. But I think I would always advise taking, a, we, we should wait for the advice from the Ministry of Labour. But do you know when that's going to come? I mean, do you see that as a problem at this point where we don't have clear directives and clear instructions? Because, I mean, not blaming everybody, but everybody is in an uncertain, ambiguous position, right? Sure. So should we just make our own decisions then? I don't think we should. I think at the moment, until we're told otherwise, it should be business as, all, as usual. Otherwise, mm -hmm. there won't be a business to work in when we come out of this. Right. I think we should be very careful as individuals to take what's in the media as truth at all the times. And mm -hmm. I think we should wait until we hear proper directives on what we should and shouldn't do. But businesses should be taking some serious decisions. They should be stopping business travel and thinking innovatively about how that meeting should come along, you know, and, and out of this, there'd probably be some great cost savings that business hadn't even thought about. Yeah, all right, so just coming to that point of yours though, so in terms of cost saving and salary reductions, how is it that employers from, again, like a business perspective, how is it that they can cut costs without just firing all of their employees? Well, I think it's also important to note that not in all employers can afford to cut their staff headcount because they can't afford the final settlements. And I, and I think that's an interesting observation. But I think, again, ask your employees, that ask them to go part-time, take unpaid leave if they need to, if they can. They may want to take unpaid leave mm -hmm. to go back and visit their relatives. Um, look at which staff you can let that happen to and, and encourage that within the team. Right. Sure, so we have another question from Shane McGinley. So he asks, can companies that have to close, is there insurance to cover losses? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, we went through this in 2008, 2009, when redundancy suddenly hit the UAE, and we'd never heard of that before. I and mean, it's not covered in labor law. And, and there's always been since then, is it, isn't it legal to make people redundant? I'm a very practical HR person. You know, if a business legitimately does not have a role anymore, then that role is made redundant, and that is therefore a legitimate reason for termination. Right. Um, but this is a great time to look at your headcount, and that's what we all did in 2008, 2009, and, and how companies have grown perhaps too much and roles have become too spread. Mm -hmm. And this is an opportunity often to readjust your structure, readjust your organization chart, and, and think about how business has evolved since the last crisis. And we shouldn't go from crisis to crisis, yeah. but that's just natural. That's yeah. human nature. It's very interesting you mentioned it yesterday. It was last night that I was watching a TED talk uh, that Bill Gates had given back in 2015, where he had said that, you know, we are not ready for an epidemic. I'm not sure if you watched it. Mm. So it was back then that these conversations had started that, you know, we don't have the enough resources, the supplies yeah. of companies have to shut down. We just don't know what to do. So do you think there was a lack of readiness and preparedness in companies and economies and governments yeah i mean I, I remember when i was i was based in kuwait and we were talking about the pandemic and some and i was working for a large company we had a contingency plan now the problem with contingency plans you only look at them when you perhaps potentially think you need them and i, I think businesses need to start having a up-to-date contingency plan the whole time think about a work from home policy you know we talk about it a lot as hr and, and employees want it and a more flexible approach but we're restricted very much by labor law here and perhaps this is a great opportunity for a refresh of labor law oh really so what do you think needs to change in the current labor law that we have which is like you mentioned yeah. from donkeys years ago it's very old um, yeah. and it was written before dubai was even really dubai it, it was it was a very small hub and and the hr manager hr director i've, I've always struggled to, to fit flexibility in the, the rules of labor law. And I think this is a great opportunity for allowing part-time workers. Yeah. Um, that's, we, we do it, but it's, it's not covered in labor law. And it'd be great for some direction there, perhaps zero hours contract, mm -hmm. allowing people to flex up, flex down 
which we can do in Europe, but we can't do here because of the visa restrictions. Um, just speaking of that though, so I know a lot of countries in the world, I think it was Taiwan and the US, etc. What's really happening is uh, they're sharing employees. By sharing employees, for those of you who don't know, I mean that there are certain sectors where there is a drop in demand of employees, where employees are being sent back home. And there are certain sectors like supermarkets, healthcare sectors, uh, cyber security centers, for example, they need more manpower right now. Sure. So do you think a sharing employee concept needs to come in place and can come in place here today? I think, again, I think it should, for sure. I mean, there are businesses that are super busy at the moment, supermarkets, for example, that could probably really do with additional headcount yeah. and will be restricted around being able to flex up. You can be employed by one person and work for another company with an NOC in place, but the whole debate about who pays for the gratuity, mm. it's not clear. And to have a flexible way of working, and the, the country's slowly working to that, we're starting to see freelancer contracts coming in. Sure. But it, it's still taking its time to help businesses with the flexibility. Interesting. So I'm just going to take more questions from our viewers right now. So we have Samir Drummer Butter who says, what are the guidelines to establish presence and proper dedication to tasks where companies have been used to other ways in normal working conditions? So what about confidential work information? What's going to happen to all of that? Who knows? I mean, I think uh, companies, again, should start thinking about how they have signed up their employees. You know, they should all have a confidentiality agreement in place anyway mm -hmm. um, for their businesses. But in, in terms of how they can help the, the employers with the flexibility and, and um, the policies in place, this is a great time to refresh. You know, potentially business is a little slower. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a great time to review policies, standard operating procedures, sure. and, and, and actually refresh them to, to take into account these situations. Right, so then from a, from an HR perspective, and as you are an HR expert, I think I need to ask you this. So companies are talking about a business continuity plan because, you know, you do foresee that a lot of businesses are probably not going to exist after, you know, this entire crisis is over. But what would an ideal business continuity plan be for the viewers who want to learn more about it right now? That's a hard one to answer. I mean, I'm from the, the mindset of if you have a positive attitude, you can see benefit in, in any situation. And, mm -hmm. and I think what will kill businesses now, and as, as we've seen from the past, is to panic and to, to say, well, we might as well give up. And there's, there's innovation in any situation. And, and this is a great time to sit down, and, and, which is easier said than done, given the fact that you're too busy worrying about today, tomorrow, and the payroll at the end of the, the month, sure. to think about how can we innovate as a business so that we do ride this through. Right. Um, because for sure, businesses will suffer, well, business have suffered. I mean, if you're in uh, the entertainment, if you're in events management, mm. there are no events, so what do you do? If you're, exactly. if you're in schooling or nursing, what do you do? And this is a great opportunity for those sort of places to think about deep cleans, to think about how we can get ourselves ready for as soon as we can open our doors again that we go back to how it should be. But there's no rule book for a business continuity plan for there's now. There's no rule book. All right, great. I'm going to take a few more questions. We have Tazeen Jaffrey who says, how can employers humanely cut costs? <laughs> I think we've covered it a little bit, but if you have a more humane answer for it. <laughs> humanely cut costs. I mean, I think it... I think it's not always the workforce is where you can make cost savings, it's number one. Um, there are ways that you can actually make cost savings as a business that do not require you to reduce headcount. And again, that's where I think you should ask your employees, where do you see we can save costs that we've not saved costs before? Yeah. To rely on it as a business owner to have to come up with all the answers is exhausting. Yeah. But to say to your employees, come on guys, you know, we are a team, this is a team environment, what can you see that I can't that will save money? Right. And ask them and, and you'll be surprised the answers you get back. Yeah, great. So what I really want to know is now that so much of the cost cutting is happening, are companies still hiring in this region? Is there potential for employees who've lost their jobs to move to other companies? Great question. Yes, people are still hiring. Yeah. Um, you know, depending on the industry, there are definitely still people hiring. And, and even if they're not hiring now, mm -hmm. if they're sensible and they're hunkering down now, they should be starting to look for potential employees that they're going to need for when things pick up again. Right. And out of every negative situation of people losing staff, 
those staff are then great talent on the market for the, the clever employer to find them and secure them now for right. the future. Right, for sure. So now these are the questions that some uh, of the employees here within our company has had, which is, you know, they have parents back home who are again senior citizens, etc. So yeah. how is it that they can take care of them whilst being here in this region? And again, if they are in places that are vulnerable to the virus and sure. the virus count is just increasing, sure. what can be done? I think employers need to be aware of that. As I, as I said at the beginning there, we're mainly expats working here. I don't know what your, your nationality mix is here, but just by being sensible, allowing a telephone to be used and for in free international calls for your employees or setting up a room where they can talk to them via Zoom or allowing them to take leave immediately um, so they can fly back and see them because flights are still happening. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's just about being flexible and saying, Sure. How can I help you? What do you need from me? If, if it's, I know for my parents are in their 80s, you know, just dropping them a phone call every couple of days yeah. means I'm happy, they're happy. And that's not a lot of expense for a business to do. You mm. probably already have an international line, you already have these things, but the employer, the employee may not have this inf uh, ability to contact them when they get home. Right. So just saying there's a phone, there's a, the booking system, you get 15 minutes per person and, and off you go. Yeah. And let it self-manage. Just to to allow the employee to stop worrying about those kind of things and carry on working. Yeah, I think that is the main problem right now, right? Where employees are very jittery, they don't know what's happening, sure. there's just so much stress. So in all of this, is the conversation of mental health and well-being coming in the, the workforce in the UAE right now at all? Well, I don't know so much about the UAE. I think, certainly, I think this is a worldwide question, especially as we're now suggesting everyone remote works and mm -hmm. then self-isolation. I think with self-isolation, you, you actually, as a human being, you do need human contact. Yeah. You do need to be able to meet people. You need to get out. You need to breathe fresh air. You need to have some ability to actually have a conversation one-on-one -on -one with someone. And yes, Zoom's fantastic and Skype's fantastic, but it, you lose quite a lot of... Um, humanity there yeah and it was it was said on I think last night's uh, Downing Street program that it may not be the coronavirus that kills people but loneliness because we're self-isolating for in some cases for the elderly yeah six weeks six weeks isolation living on your own I mean forgetting how much food have I got left who am I talking to it's Who's like a prison sentence isn't it it's it like is the rest. so I think definitely we need to be taking those things into consideration. Yeah, probably even from a company perspective, right? Is it worth investing in, say, a counsellor or somebody who can uh, have those reassuring conversations with the employees in the workplace? It's a great idea. But you know what? Even just having team huddles and obviously at a safe distance from each other. <laughs> but um, just having a conversation to say, this is what's happening to me, how are you? Mm -hmm. Those kind of things sure. should just alleviate concerns. Right, great. I'm going to take a few more questions now. So we have Bernie DeBoosman who's asked, do you foresee that these changes that you mentioned right now will be taken by the UAE government? <laughs> That's a tricky one. <laughs> it, it is a tricky one because I'd like to see that happening and I think to do that it goes back to my question is I think labor law is due for a refresh mm -hmm. to bring it into the 2020s. You know, right. I mean it, it was written 30 40 years back and yeah. when the world is a very different place the world was a very different place this time last week. Sure. You know, things have moved so quickly every half hour we're getting information and mm. and I think it would be lovely to see some flexibility and some ideas from the UAE government, but we can't wait for them. And, and as business owners, we should be making decisions here today. And these decisions we're making here today should be policies that we can implement going forward. But it's also about getting past the bureaucratic hurdles that we have here, right? I mean, that's yeah. why uh, we don't have a very flexible HR system. Like you said, it's probably yeah. because of the ancient labor policies. But he asked a follow-up right now, which is, given what you said, if it is not mentioned in the UAE labor laws, is it therefore illegal for those who have taken salary deductions or unpaid leave part-time work elsewhere while the situation continues? That's an awesome question. Um, the, the, the great thing about labor laws is it's very basic. The really bad thing about labor law is it's very basic. The devil's in the detail and there's not a lot of detail. Um, I think when it comes to salary deductions, legally you're not meant to take a salary deduction. Mm -hmm. However, I would rather that as an employee than lose my job. Yeah. And I think as long as the employees agree to it, and it's a temporary thing for how long this temporary situation happens, then it, it's a fluid 
situation that we get ourselves out of. And that's certainly something that we saw back in 2008, 2009 when mm -hmm. businesses were in trouble last time. Yeah. And, and we got ourselves out of it. And I think, I think there has to be flexibility. I think employees need to understand that they're needed you want to carry on working because you, you like your job and you want your business to succeed. And for that, you'll take this sacrifice. You're not the only one taking the sacrifice. Yeah. Ideally, the business owner should be as well. Right, so as per the labor law, again, just clarifying what we discussed yeah. in the first half, it is illegal, unpaid leave. So is that going to be a situation where once we come out of it, say in three, four, five months, yeah. whenever it is, that these employees can actually go to the Ministry of Manpower or, or the Labour uh, Ministry and say that, you know, this was done to us, we need our yeah. compensation. Will that be an issue? Well, I mean, I think this is where I was talking to you earlier. I think if, if that was the company that I was working with and I was implementing um, half pay salary or mm -hmm. um, salary deductions, I would do it in discussion with the employee and that I would have their signed agreement to this situation. Right. I think with, with HR, anything to do with employees, the, the, best, the best advice I could ever give is talk to them. Be right. open, be honest, don't hold anything back. Because as a human being, if I'm not being told things, I make things up myself. And if I've got the option of taking pay cut versus not having a job, mm -hmm. then it's my decision which one I take. For sure. So communication is key communication for sure. Communication is absolutely key. Right. We've got a lot of comments saying this is really informative, great interview, etc. But we do want to encourage you to ask any question related to HR, business, if you're an employer, employee, or you are a small and medium-sized business owner. So just send out your questions, pose them in the comments below and we will take all of them. Just moving on to uh, the business side of it right sure. now. So one good thing we saw coming out in the last two days, I think, was when Sheikh Hamdan announced about the 1.5 billion dirham stimulus. Yep. This is for different industries. And he did mention that this is so that the businesses don't suffer. I think there needs to be more clarity on which are the businesses, what scale are we talking about? There are way too many questions, and I'm sure because you're not Sheikh Hamdan, you can't answer them for me right now. Yeah. But then just later on, we also found out that uh, the central bank uh, released another 100 dirham stimulus, 100 billion dirham sim stimulus, I guess. So uh, what I really want to know is, do you see a stimulus package just for the startups or the small and medium enterprises, which are suffering right now and are struggling to just survive? Yeah, I mean, this really couldn't have come at a worse time for a small business because quite often as an SME, we see the summer months decline and this is where we're making our main money mm. and now suddenly we're not. And so how do we get out of it? And I think it's awesome what the government's doing with the stimulus. But yeah. my question is, and how do we access it? Exactly. Who's it, who's it for? How's it, how do we get it? When do we get it? Mm -hmm. And as a, as a business owner, we're still busy trying to work out what we're doing today. Yeah it would be good that they could give more information about how we're going to access it. And that, that information is not available at the moment. It's not available to HR experts either, right? Like, no. uh, so basically, we don't know who are these packages for, when it will come, and when actually you're going to get it on the no, banks? Not to my knowledge, no. All right, so now what I, the second question would obviously be, so as a part of this, will, do you see a lot of companies, big and small, all different scales, shutting down completely, like in the next three, four months? I would say it's inevitable and that's that's incredibly sad if we don't come out of this quickly. Mm -hmm. um, businesses, you know, if, if your business is a nursery, um, you, you already see the dip in the summer months. So this is key time for you mm -hmm. and you can't open, you haven't been able to open for many weeks now. Sure. Right. Without an understanding when we can open, it's very hard to plan. And that's, the, that's I think, the key thing here. At the moment, it's very hard to plan your cash flow. Mm -hmm. um, we're about to go into Ramadan next month. Yeah. And, you know, we're about to go into the summer. And yeah. these are notoriously slow times for small businesses, unless that's important to you. But if, you know, this is a particular peak for you. But if, you're in, if your tourism's your key thing or you know, schooling or nursery or gyms, you know, I mean, and you, people can't go to you. It, it's, it's tough times and we just need to know, and the answer is we can't know the answer is, how can we plan to come out of this? Right, so now if you had to give like a survival plan for SMEs, what would that be? What is What are the immediate things that they can do and the immediate actions they can take? I, I think it's incredibly key that they understand their finances. Uh, a colleague of mine wrote a fantastic blog, um, uh, uh, article on LinkedIn yesterday about this, and it's about understanding exactly how much money you do have, mm -hmm. because it's all about money. It's all about cash flow. If you don't have cash flow, you don't you don't have a business, um, and it's it's all about 
hunkering down and, and recognizing how can we go on to the lowest potential denominator we can get to to get the cost down as far as we can collect money that's owed to us yeah and the problem with SMEs we tend to be the last ones paid by big businesses sure for sure I'm just gonna take a few more questions now so we do have Nikhil Pereira who's asking do you foresee the private sector have a blanket work from home directive again we're just coming back to our discussion but if you can just answer it for Nikhil here I don't know the answer, uh, to be fair, uh, because as I said earlier, not all businesses can work from home. Yeah. You know, I mean, what does that actually mean? We sometimes, you know, I'm sitting here with desktops behind me. None of those can suddenly work from home unless you ask them all to go and sure. take it. We couldn't be doing this interview exactly. if we weren't sitting here. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen. It hasn't happened. I think we have to look at how it's happened in other countries mm -hmm. um, that are ahead of us with uh, coronavirus and I don't believe they've enforced that. Great, just coming back to the SME conversation, there's Rohit Nanda who asks, who can SMEs turn to and get support from at this particular uncertain time? So I think this is one question I think most SME owners have right yeah. now. Is there one body, one authority, one person <laughs> who you know they can just go to and yeah. you know, look for solutions um, from? No, but there are network groups, there are business groups out there. We, for example, we run run we run an alpha group meeting where we're, we have board meetings for SMEs and what has been great is the board that we run those SMEs have been supporting each other they've been asking each other questions we've been checking in with each other a bit like phoning your mum and dad to see yeah. how you are we're phoning each other to say how's business with you mm -hmm. we meet once a month and in that once a month meeting we talk about business we do some business education and yeah. we share best practice and what has been great is to actually just escalate that for more than once a month to actually just be checking in with each other sure. and, and sharing best practice because some people are benefiting out of this situation mm -hmm. but quite often they're not and, and how can we get through it as a business owner we we're so concerned with what's going on right in front of us yeah we're completely forgetting that there's other people to ask help and it's actually quite a big thing to ask for support and help from your peers so it's a peer-to-peer -peer accountability board that we run for sure so one of the the major questions that all SMEs have is or all small startups etc they have is how are the banks going to help us financing has been a huge issue forever even yeah. in the good times oh. we know the banking sector is suffering right now which is why the central bank had to provide the stimulus package yes. but even at this point with the ones who've already got loans are there plans of maybe long-term loan payments or cutting interest rates etc i think as a business owner as a mortgage owner certainly we should feel happy to go to the banks and say what can you do to help me yeah. and this is where the banks should set up and try and help as much as possible because we're only we're, the country's only here because people SMEs are around business owners are here we all own houses mm -hmm. we're even renting you know I mean we've got employees that are on you know they're now on unpaid leave and their yeah. rent's due how what happens exactly. and Again, there's restrictions uh, in country on banking and they, they need to think about how they can help employees, employers, mortgage owners, anybody. Are there those restrictions here in the banks in the UAE in terms of being more flexible with their interest rates, being more flexible with their loan plans, etc.? There is always flexibility and, and how I've always worked with the banks, if you don't ask, you don't know. Hmm. And you know, by asking the question, how can you help me? Again, it's a bit like asking your employees, how can you help me? Yeah. You'll be surprised how much they can help um, or are willing to help. They're having to innovate as we all are. Mm -hmm given the consistently changing environment that we're in. Yeah, I mean, it's scary right now because uh, Dubai especially, it has a credit culture. Yeah. We always talk about this debt panel, even in the good times, you know. So. And it, we survived so much on tourism in Dubai. Exactly, and now the tourism, travel, aviation, all of those sectors are mm -hmm. suffering, which lead to the hospitality sector suffering. Yes. It's just a weird time to be in, right? Totally weird. And, you know, I mean, if I was a coffee shop owner, I mean, they're still, they're still functioning. I was in a coffee shop this morning. There was lots of people. There were still meetings happening in coffee yeah. shops. But they're about to get into going to Ramadan. They would have seen a downtick on, on uh, customers. And yeah. they're going to have to shut for most of the summer. You know, 
there has to be some flexibility they're going to need to start bringing in. Sure, I'm just going to take another question now. Again, if you have questions, keep posting them in. Our session is not over yet. We are taking questions with Claire Danelli. Uh, we have Michael who's asked, does the WPS payment system allow reduced salaries even when agreed with employees or will the MOHRE automatically block the file? Um, it does. My, again, how depending on the bank that you're using, you can put there's a there's a column on WPS that says uh, unpaid leave, and you can put a figure in there which is so if you're going on half pay, you'd put 15 in there, for example, and that mm -hmm. explains why the salary is less than normal. Right. And how long they'll allow that to happen is unknown. Yeah. But certainly through WPS, you can actually justify why the figure's lower than the Ministry of Labour contract. Right. I mean that, that probably shows like the, the positives and the negative of being so tech driven right now right like doing yeah. things online you yeah can't, you can't really have that conversation i mean if you're just calling up for example a banker you can say that you know this is the situation blah 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 yeah but when everything is just online and automated that flexibility goes you away the flexibility it? yeah i mean that's there for a reason that's there because people are meant to have advanced holiday pay and that would then explain why they didn't have a salary the next month now's the time for us to use it for a different reason sure sure and now just speaking of technology though uh, there's obviously an opportunity amidst all of this for a lot of sectors. I mean, it's probably not the right thing to say morally on a moral basis, but then, you know, we've seen Netflix uh, numbers soaring uh, in the last few weeks, maybe, and then we've seen cybersecurity companies profiting, healthcare pharma companies are going to make a lot of money during this yes. phase. Yes. Uh, do you see tech startups also benefiting in this time? Because most startups in this region right now are moving towards the tech sphere and arena. I mean, yes, I, I do, and there's some amazing um, applications out there to allow free-flowing information via technology, and that's what I mean about innovation. This is what we're starting to see. This is what we're starting to find. You know, you can have uh, B and I, for example, have got. Uh, they they usually have a weekly face-to-face -face meeting. Mm -hmm. They're all online now. They did right. a. You know, they're all via Zoom. Seventy people attending the same meeting via Zoom, and. Perhaps Zoom is not even the right application to be using. There's amazing cloud-based systems. And this is what I mean about infrastructure for companies. You know, you may not necessarily now have the infrastructure to allow home working. Yeah. But what you should be learning from this experience and what you should have learned from the experience of 2008-2009 is this uncertainty is going to come again. Yeah. And now's the opportunity to make sure that you invest in technology and you keep investing in technology and you keep yourself up to date and you keep your team up to date to allow uh, an immediate move to on uh, remote working. Yeah. Um, I, to so. just, to, just to allow business to flow. Now, I mean, that's something you may not be able to do right this second in time, but this is something you should have built into your business plan and how we can keep up to date with technology so that we became, we always, we always are fluid in, in our ways of working. Yeah, I think a lot of posts on on social media today is just people appreciating how far we've come in terms of technology and emerging technologies like yeah. AI it's helping so much and this is when we realize how to implement and use it and execute all of it properly right sure. but it would be great if some of the restrictions that we have here in the UAE were lifted at especially at this particular so time. What are these restrictions that need to be lifted? Things like we can't FaceTime, we can't use um, Skype, um, you know, we have to use VPNs mm -hmm. and, and you know that there are restrictions and again that's restricting perhaps the lower paid people being able to contact their families where they, they're used to FaceTiming their families. Yeah. And that's an easy restriction to lift. I'd assume. Yeah, and also with the whole uh, global mobile traffic when it comes to companies who have branches across the world, yeah. I mean, this just makes it so much more harder. You can't really do meetings, you can't travel. So yeah, I mean, this is probably a time to start the conversation about lifting the ban on yeah. Skype and WhatsApp calls. WhatsApp calling, I mean, the amount yeah. of times we've told people we can't accept WhatsApp calling and they still try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like we're the only country in the world that I know, allow. and then yeah. there are these reports which come off as a one-off that, you know, today it worked. And then today. <laughs> Five minutes later, it doesn't again. work anymore. Yeah. So probably time to start those conversations Absolutely. as well. Um, we have a question from Varsha who says, Claire, what are some of your top tips on keeping the team motivated and together in these challenging times? Talking, communicating, trying to do some, you know, events while we still can in coffee shops, you know, get them together and talking to each other. Talking is the key thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're, we're seeing more and more restrictions on what we can and can't do, but as soon as we come out of this, as soon as things happen, that's a great time to get the team together again and say, great, we did it, we survived. Yeah, um, and it's also sort of made us realize, right? So, so many of the meetings and events that weren't really 
necessary it's being cancelled and it's not really creating much of an impact for example yeah. the meetings that can be done over an email or meetings sure. that can be done over just Skype or you know yeah. any of those video calling Zoho's yeah. for example so that's that's really happening now so what I'm getting to right now is the world is talking about how this is a correction that we probably needed when we saw in China the pollution levels went drastically down yeah. during uh, yeah. the COVID crisis there thankfully they've come out of it and they've shut the last hospital and all of that but at this point do you think there's going to be a whole redirection in the way businesses work and the way HR policies are written etc is, is that going to happen I hope so and it, I think what we need to do is re reflect mm -hmm. now today tomorrow when we come out of this situation about what worked well what yeah. could we have done differently what could we have done better mm -hmm. and then make the decisions there and then to make those changes because it's very easy to come out of this and go back to behaving how you used to behave. Yeah. And that's what we did, a lot of businesses did back in 2009. What, what did we learn out of this situation and how can we make sure that doesn't happen again? Yeah. Because for sure this will happen again. Um, this, is, this is going to be something that comes around, hopefully not that often, but it will happen again. And the last thing we need to do is take that contingency plan, take all that learning and then do nothing with it. Mm -hmm. This is a great opportunity to refresh, rebrand, and, and come out of it as celebrating that great we survived. Yeah, yeah, we are all in survival mode right now, but the businesses, like the small businesses that aren't really doing well with the survival, yeah. uh, and there are, of course, the bigger corporations that have cushioned themselves. They've, they've planned them, their operations well, they've got the financial backup, etc. Mm -hmm. Is there any way that these bigger fish, essentially, they can support the smaller businesses, the SMEs and the SMBs? Well, quite often, Yes, by just paying the invoice that's been sitting on their desk yeah. for the last three months. Um, yeah. Because big corporations sit on invoices a lot, and that's how they're a big corporation and have loads of money. Sure. Um, but yes, I mean, they should be putting their arms around small businesses. You know, what would be really great is they start using small businesses to help them with their, mm -hmm. their, their innovations. And, you know, great things about outsourced businesses is we come with best practice ideas sure. to bring in, a fresh pair of eyes to bring in, mm -hmm. to help businesses make improvements. Um, they, sh you know, just by supporting us by asking small businesses to, to, to provide them a service that they would perhaps do in-house or sit around not thinking about doing, yeah. have it on a plan and actually implement, that's how they can support us. Great. Uh, so we are still taking questions, but we will be uh, wrapping up the session in probably the next five minutes or so. So if you do have any questions, don't forget to post them in the comments below and I will be taking them. Uh, um, we have one more question that I'm going to take from Ashford. He says, if I go on holiday today and then later the government keeps me in quarantine for two weeks, which has been happening, where does that leave my employer? What I would say then that that would be sick pay. Um, and what is great about labour law is it's quite good sick pay entitlement. So mm -hmm. he'll be, he will be entitled to 15 days full pay. Right. And then the uh, isolation will be for 14 days. So he should, the employer should be paying that through sick pay. All right, sure. So now we have another question that are there any specific companies or brands, local or global, she thinks have handled it particularly well or badly? So basically, I think they're just looking for examples so we can learn from those examples. Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, I haven't seen any particular one. I've seen some great ideas, for example. I mean, one company is encouraging everyone to come up with a song that they can sing for two minutes in the bathroom <laughs> to show to wash their hands. Sure, the think, coronavirus song. Yeah, the course. coronavirus song. Yeah. Um, you know, there's some great examples of innovate, innovative ideas. I haven't seen a particular company to give an example of good or bad, mm -hmm. but I think just hearing some positivity out of you know a, an adverse situation like this and yeah. saying that you can just imagine going into that company and everyone's singing whilst they're washing their hands i mean yeah. it's amazing <laughs> yeah another thing i really want to know is there are so many people in the front lines right the ones who are directly impacted for example the medical healthcare professionals so how is it that we as employees in a relatively safer position right now can help them well, I mean, by not going to see them and putting additional pressure on the on a, a pressure point just because we think we possibly have a bit of a cold. Yeah. And we're going to get a bit of a cold. We are in Dubai and the weather changes and we all get a cold this sure. time of year. It's yeah. Um, but, you know, just being sensible, I think, in the fact that these guys are under a lot of pressure. And if we know someone that's in the medical service, you know, just by 
making them something to eat and taking it around there, you yeah. know, and just checking in to make sure they're, they're dealing with this because they're probably under a lot of pressure and working additional hours and perhaps aren't looking after themselves. Yeah. What can we do to take the pressure off of them by just doing their shopping, walking their dog, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And, you know, just being aware of them and how we can help them. Another thing I'm actually very concerned about is 90% of our food is imported. Yes. There's so much trouble with trade and logistics. There's again not a lot of clarity in terms of what's going to happen, shippings, etc. Everything's been stopped and blocked. Uh, what's going to happen to that? And is, is this also providing a business opportunity for the ones who are growing their own food and, you know, sure. hydroponics and we're talking yeah. about home farms and stuff? So, sure. I mean, there are some amazing companies in the UAE that grow vegetables, that grow fruit, and purchasing locally, local products, is something we should be doing anyway. Yeah. Um, it's it's the, the cost sensitive type of thing you should be doing, mm -hmm. rather, and, and then we've got the products, life line is a lot longer. Um, I don't believe the supermarkets are going to be in any trouble at the moment, they were certainly saying that everywhere, they've got a great supply chain that's coming in, mm -hmm. I think that may hit us later. As we're now going through the supply chain that's actually in and I think sensible shopping is something we should all be doing mm -hmm. but buying locally is something we should be doing we should be supporting the local farmers and right I think we should just do normally yeah, look at that yes there's another thing that's going to come out of it we are going to be sourcing most of our food locally because yeah. at some point the shelves are going to be empty yes potentially potentially yeah I mean let's just try and think positively about yeah. this and you know perhaps now's the time to everyone to turn vegan and eat vegetables <laughs> there's amazing farmers in the UAE yeah sure I'm just gonna end with one last question about when do you see all of this coming to an end and when do you see life going back to normal well I'm a positive person I see it all ending on the 31st of March and <laughs> we get our lives back there really? um, I, I don't know is the answer. I mean, we're seeing positivity out of China now. They're back to the, the Corona hospitals now closed because they yeah. don't have enough people to fill it. And businesses, you know, are starting manufacturing again in China. And I think we should take that as our base. We reacted very quickly here. We mm -hmm. closed it down very quickly. And that's an amazing thing that we've seen from the government. Yeah. It, it also showed us one thing, right? We were so heavily reliant on China. By we, I don't mean the UAE. Oh, yeah, yeah. Telling about the world. Well, I mean, just showed that, that, you know, maybe it's, it's time to become independent. It is, but you know, tourism here is heavily geared toward Chinese tourists, mm -hmm. and to get that lifted and get them coming back in again will help a lot of small businesses. Sure, sure. I think I'm just going to end with this very um, interesting question from Kamran Heather, who says, "How are you feeling? It will all be all right." I think this is the positivity we all need. Thank you, Kamran, for asking us how we are all feeling <laughs> and reassuring that it's all going to be all right. And then he also mentions very good points. Please, people tend to forget uh, whenever something. Like like this happens again they tend to panic again so yes let's stop creating panic let's stop spreading fake news just get news from the relevant uh, reliable sources social distancing of course is something that everybody is talking about and yeah let's follow all the orders and the directives coming from the government thank you so much for joining us yeah. here on this session Claire we've definitely learned a lot and you've answered so many of ours and our viewers questions here today thank you for having me and thank you for watching AB live we will be back again next Tuesday